They ruled the planet for over 170 million years and then disappeared. History says it was a huge city-sized asteroid that came from space and hit the land of the Yucatan Peninsula around 66 million years ago. It caused terrible environmental changes, debris in the air blocking the sunlight so the plants couldn't survive. Temperatures on Earth's surface plunged. The animals were struggling to survive until they finally went extinct. At least, that's something many paleontologists believe happened. Now, they found out dinosaurs were about to go extinct even before the asteroid. Their diversity started to go down 10 million years before the asteroid. Older, long-living species didn't evolve enough to adapt to all changes in the environment, such as higher sea levels, massive volcanic activity, cooler periods. Dinosaurs preferred a warm climate because it helped them to keep a stable body temperature. Dinosaurs lived on all seven continents, even in Antarctica. That's because it wasn't all ice back then. Around 90 million years ago, Antarctica was a swampy rainforest with a warm, pleasant climate. It was even in a different location, only 560 miles from the then South Pole. That was the time of the warmest climate on our planet. The sea level was 560 feet higher than today, and the tropical sea surface could reach temperatures up to 95 degrees. Antarctica still had something like polar night, months without sunlight, but the climate around the South Pole was mild and temperate, with no ice masses. Dinosaurs didn't shed their skin in one long piece like today's reptiles do. Scientists believe they shed it in small pieces, had something like dinosaur fur fur. There was a dinosaur, Pegomastax, that looked like a cross between a porcupine and a parrot. It had one-inch-long jaws and ate plants. It had a short beak and self-sharpening long teeth. They were like scissors this small dinosaur used to slice up plants. Our modern lion has a mighty bite, but a big and scary T-Rex bites more than two times stronger. The king of the dinosaurs has the strongest bite amongst all land animals, three and a half times stronger than today's record holder, the Australian saltwater crocodile. It also had the longest teeth, almost 10 inches long, the length of an iPad. Most modern animals are either warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Dinosaurs were somewhere in between. Scientists think they mainly were mesotherms, which means the activity of their muscles could warm their bodies, but their body temperature could fluctuate too. Many dinosaurs, such as Triceratops and Stegosaurus, had spikes, plates, horns, crests, or other bizarre structures on their bodies. In the beginning, scientists thought that's for things like defense. They had neither sharp teeth nor hooked claws on the toes to hunt. But soon, they expanded the theory. It was probably a way to impress their mates and identify members of their kind. One species, namely Pachycephalosaurus, even had a funky bone hat on top of its head. Scary, tall as buildings, massive. That's what we saw in the movies. But dinosaurs mainly were human-sized or even smaller. Bigger bones were easy to be fossilized, so that's why we mostly find gigantic species. Eoraptor, or Dawn Stealer, was the first named dinosaur. Small and toothy, like me, it got its name because it comes from the dawn of the dinosaur age. The size of a German shepherd, but probably not that friendly. Arched back, sharp bony plates, curved tail. Ankylosaurus were some sort of giant, muck spikier dinosaur version of an armadillo. Its weak spot was a soft underbelly. But meat-eating dinos that were after this one had to flip that guy first to get there. Still, it was really tough because of their impressive gear. Scientists believe they even had bony eyelids. Some dinos ate meat, others plants, and some of them could nibble even on pebbles. One dinosaur, called Gallimimus, couldn't physically chew all those plants it ate, so it would ingest pebbles to mash up the food. Gallimimus looked like some weird alien mix of dinosaur and bird. But it couldn't dribble a basketball because its wrists weren't capable of keeping the palms parallel to the floor. And they had no three-point shot. The largest dinos were plant eaters. Meat eaters, or so-called theropods, were mostly smaller. One reason is that plant-eating dinosaurs were very greedy. They would devour enormous amounts of food, sometimes even swallowing the entire branches without chewing. Some of the biggest could eat a ton of food every day, like a bus-sized pile. There were also more plant-eating dinosaurs than the other ones. 
scientists are still not sure if meat-eating dinosaurs were able to coordinate themselves in hunting groups. They were probably unfriendly towards each other, especially when it comes to sharing prey. Fossils, and the shape of delicate bones in the eye, tell dinosaurs mostly roamed around during the day. Scientists think only smaller meat-eating dinos, like Velociraptor, were active during the night. They were after those small mammals snuffling around and trying to find food while big dinosaurs were asleep. Or that's what they thought. Those small mammals were usually burrowing animals that survived both dinosaur reign and ice age hiding underground. Not all mammals were hiding from dinosaurs. Some small but sneaky creatures, like Repinomammus, would steal the eggs from big dinosaurs, which was a big thing considering they had to trick the mama dinosaur first. Researchers believe dinos tried to flap on the ground to get faster at running up inclined terrains to catch their prey. Such behavior caused them to learn how to fly, which of course happened through thousands of years. Dinosaurs were fuzzy and fluffy. They are related to birds, but even those early dino species that didn't fly had feathers, like gigantic, scary, fuzzy T-Rex. Movies lied. You just can't stand still and expect a T-Rex would pass you by. Its vision was probably better than one today's raptors have. Even without it, they still had a pretty good sense of smell. Running could help it though. Scientists calculate T-Rex could probably run at 12 miles per hour. It would shatter its bones at a greater speed. Some dinos had tails more than 45 feet long. Tails helped them to keep their balance when running, especially those that walked on two legs. Velociraptors were not like raptors we see on the screen, but more like some sort of prehistoric chickens. Small, a little bit bigger than a turkey, two feet in height, probably had feathers, hollow bones just like birds, mostly loners. But they were probably among the smartest dinos. Their brain was big compared to their bodies. They were as intelligent as today's ostriches. The name Velociraptor means speedy thief. Stegosaurs had a pretty big body, spiky plates, and a tiny brain, the size of a walnut or lime. But at least it had its own air conditioner. Researchers found out its spikes were filled with veins that transferred blood and developed a theory that they were cooling its giant body that way. Dimorphodon was the flying reptile with a wingspan of 8 feet and multi-purpose teeth. Teeth in the upper jaw were longer, sharper, and better for catching food from the water. The teeth in the bottom jaw were better for holding the game in transit. One of the first potential dinosaur discoveries was in China, 3,500 years ago. No one knew about dinosaurs then, so people thought teeth they found could belong to dragons. The Hadrosaurus was a duck-billed dino with more than a thousand teeth. When they would fall off, it could grow new ones indefinitely. Dinosaurs' eggs were pretty big, some as big as beach balls. Now that's a novel. The Baryonyx was a big fan of fish. Its name means a heavy claw, and it got it because of big extended claws that were pretty sharp and made up the thumb of each hand. When catching fish, they used the claws like spears. Mosasaurus, also popular in movies, was not quite the dinosaur but a marine lizard, closely related to monitor lizards and snakes. Like a snake, it had jaws that could expand when swallowing the food. These creatures were speedy. They had a tail fin and flipper-like paddles instead of arms and legs. Researchers believe they had a weak sense of smell and poor perception of depth. So they had to develop a unique hunting technique, waiting for their snack to come up to the surface for some air. Now thanks to new fossil discoveries and technologies, we're getting to learn more and more about the biology of dinosaurs. Some people don't need to know more than the fact that a few of them were colossal, terrifying, and vicious. But for those of us that do, the use of comparative biology, pigment analysis, and powerful new x-rays have allowed us to gain insight into specific features, such as their colors, eating behaviors, and the shapes of their tongues. Yes, that's right, the shapes of their tongues, which, for a long period of time, was something of a mystery. This is because soft, fleshy dinosaur parts are hardly ever retained in fossil form. But thanks to the discovery of some surviving hyoid bones, which are situated at the root of the tongue in front of the neck, we now have some insight. 
Most animals have this hyoid bone that anchors the tongue. The shape and complexity of the bone determine how free-moving the tongue can be. Scientists have discovered that nearly all dinosaurs had simple tongues that laid flat and were extremely similar to the tongues found inside the mouth of a crocodile today. Yeah, this crocodile. Go ahead and take a closer look. Nah, just kidding. Come on back. Let's take a look at some specific dinosaurs and start with a Brachiosaurus. Let me stick my neck out on the line by guessing that most of you will be familiar with this dinosaur because of its neck. You know, the one which was typically 30 feet in length? Despite its neck being its most distinctive feature, its name actually translates to arm lizard in Greek. It's common knowledge that the Brachiosaurus is one of the largest dinosaurs to ever have lived. On average, it reached 76 feet in length and 40 feet in height. That's roughly the length of two school buses and as high as a four-story building none of which were around in the era of the big guy here. Fragmentary leg bones and vertebra of even larger dinosaur species are known, but these skeletal remains are too incomplete to determine their exact size. So this guy may have been the largest dinosaur ever. A renowned herbivore, thank goodness. The Brachiosaurus is thought to have eaten up to 880 pounds of dry plant matter every day. Most of this was made up of coniferous trees, ginkgos, and cycads. This target might have been hard to hit for this dinosaur, as researchers have learned that its teeth were spoon-shaped and not ideal for chewing food. This means that the creature would have swallowed vegetation whole, as its teeth were suited to stripping it but not breaking up large chunks of plants. This, along with the dinosaur's body shape, suggests that the Brachiosaurus would have liked to feed as quickly as possible. Dinos like these didn't always make use of their ability to strip towering trees when dining. The Brachiosaurus traveled in herds, moving to the next location once they had exhausted all of the local vegetation. And I mean all of the local vegetation, not just that which hung high on trees. It's likely that the creatures supplemented their diets with vegetation at lower levels, especially after they'd done a number on all the nearby trees. This method of feasting was the most energetically appealing for this giant. By munching on lower vegetation, researchers believe that the dinosaurs saved up to 80% in energy compared to when foraging for high-up food sources. They have also discovered that the nostrils of a Brachiosaurus were on the front of its face and not the top. This is because we now know they roam the fertile floodplains in their respective herds. For decades, it was believed that these creatures lived in deep, watery swamps. Let's look at another common misconception about a popular dinosaur. Please put your hands together for the Tyrannosaurus rex, which is arguably the most famous of all dinosaurs. Discoveries from the past 100 years have revealed that theropods had heavily feathered skin. Theropods are the family of dinosaurs to which the T. rex belongs, so naturally, people began to think that the creature would have been covered in feathers as well. However, a study from 2017 took skin impressions from the iconic dinosaur and found no evidence of the structures required to support feathers. If a T. rex did have feathers, they would have been limited to its back. Researchers accept that other large dinosaurs of the same family as the T. rex have been discovered with their remains covered in feathers. An example of this would be the Euteranus dinosaur. But as of now, the accepted theory is that feathers weren't a common feature of T. rexes. This makes it easier to believe that feathers were exclusive to smaller Tyrannosaurids and were there as a means of keeping the creature warm. For a long period of time, researchers thought feathers were an exclusive feature of the theropod family. But this theory has been debunked. Just like the kid at camp who was kicked out of the top bunk. You know, debunked. Anyway, fossil evidence discovered in Siberia now suggests that multiple different family groups of dinosaurs had feathers. The Siberian fossils in question belong to another species of dinosaur, Calendodromius zabicolicus. Oh, you think I mispronounced that? Okay, prove it. Now, this dinosaur, I'll call her Kalinda, 
had a pelvis structure superficially similar to that of a bird and was roughly 4.5 feet long, about as tall as a fridge. Since the purpose of feathers on dinosaurs was for warmth, it's quite possible that dinosaurs from cold-weather climates had more feathers than their counterparts in warm-weather climates. In general, bigger animals struggle less with keeping themselves cool, so it's likely that any of the large dinosaurs who lived in these warm climates had no feathers at all. Smaller dinosaurs who lived in cold climates, on the contrary, had plenty of feathers. We now even understand what some of the designs and patterns of these feathers on dinosaurs looked like thanks to the discovery of an ornithomimus, complete with feather and skin impressions. The name of this dinosaur is derived from Greek and actually translates to bird mimic. They were typically 11 and a half feet in length, nearly as tall as a giraffe, and despite being omnivorous, had no teeth. Its other distinctive features include three fingers, which were all unusually the same size and length. And despite their thin bone skulls, they also had large brain cavities. Their legs were extremely long, in particular their foot bones. Combine this with their toothless beaks and long necks, and yep, it must have looked a lot like an ostrich. Although they're not as big as the brachiosaurus or dinosaurs in general, they are bigger than any other bird in the world. And it wasn't just the body limbs of an ornithomimus that made it resemble an ostrich. They also had very similar feather patterns. Their heads, necks, and lower legs were mostly bare of feathers, but the rest of their bodies were well coated in downy plumage. This is what you call a bird's layer of feathers as a whole. It's possible, like an ostrich, that the dinosaur would have used this unusual feather pattern to regulate its body temperature. Despite some dinosaurs possessing feathers like birds, on top of also being their distant relatives, Dinosaurs didn't have the type of feathers required to fly for most of their existence. Feathers found in fossil impressions or preserved in amber have allowed researchers to gain insight into why these creatures weren't very aerodynamic. The structure of these feathers appears to be very simple, with a poorly defined and flexible central shaft. These feathers would have better served any dinosaur as a fashion statement as they would have helped attract the attention of other dinosaurs. These feathers also would have had the ability to regulate body temperature. Surprised to hear that dinosaurs had ostrich-like feathers? <laughs> Wait till I tell you that their prehistoric distant reptile cousins had something that looked like fur. Allow me to introduce you to the pterosaur. Its name is derived from Greek and translates to wing lizard. Just like dinosaurs, they were initially thought to have scaly or leathery skin all over their bodies. But over the course of the 20th century, fossil examinations revealed that many parts of a pterosaur's body were furry. The wingspan of a pterosaur could reach the length of over 23 feet, about as long as a London bus. Its toothless jaw was very long and resembled that of a pelican. How could something that looks like a pelican be so terrifying? These creatures were coated in pycnofibers. Those were simple structures, feather-like in composition, but strand-like and fuzzy like fur. Further research suggests that some parts of the pterosaur's body had more complex kinds of feathers with branching strands. If this is accurate, it would be the first time feathers were found on an animal that was neither a dinosaur nor a bird. All right, check this out. Water boils faster when you add a bit of salt. Myth. It doesn't make any difference. And even if it does, it may take longer for the water to boil. But it might make your pasta taste better. <laughs> Just saying. Bats are blind. Mm-mm, not true. The myth probably comes from the fact that they're nocturnal creatures and have extraordinary hearing abilities. They chase mostly when it's dark and rely on a thing called echolocation. But it doesn't mean they're blind. Their eyes aren't useless, they're just adjusted to low light conditions. A blue whale is so big, its tongue can weigh as much as a big elephant. True. Yep, these fellas are huge. You lose more heat through your head. Nah. The real reason why people believe it is because when it's cold, our head is the only part we're most likely to keep uncovered. If we went outside wearing just a t-shirt, we'd lose heat through our arms, not to mention legs, hips, and other parts. So wear a hat, guys. 
tongue map says we have different parts for different tastes. Mm, not really. There are individual taste buds that sense certain flavors more than they do with others. But it doesn't mean one area can taste sweet better than the other. Studies showed all mouth areas have taste buds sensitive to all tastes. Hey, check out this tongue map for the blue whale! <laughs> Looks like she's partial to plankton. Dinosaurs were giant. Well, that's false. Movies show them as huge, scaly lizards, but nope. First off, there were many smaller dinosaur species, and some of them were as small as a turkey or a pigeon. Plus, some dinos, like T. rex, were even covered with feathers, especially at the early stages of their lives. Oxygen is colorless. Partially true. In gas form, it has no color, but in solid or liquid form, it has a sky-blue shade. Chameleons change color because they want to match their surroundings. Myth. That would probably be a very tiring thing to do. In reality, some other things, like mood, temperature, or the amount of light they get, affect their color. When chameleons relax and stretch cells, crystals that are inside of them are affected by the light. These animals use crystals to communicate with each other. So, for example, darker shades show that they're not in such a good mood. It's more like they kind of feel aggressive. So I think I'll back off here. Neanderthals aren't our ancestors either, even though they lived with modern humans at the same time at one point, but mostly in different areas of our planet. So they're not just a stage of human development, but a different lineage. They were also pretty creative. They used fire, made tools, ate medicinal plants, cleaned their teeth, and so many more things similar to our species. Neanderthals probably went extinct because of harsh climate changes. Turkeys can blush. <laughs> that one is true. They're just like us when it comes to this. When angry, excited, or even feeling bad, the skin on their necks and heads turns red. <laughs> just like my big brother. Black holes are not really holes, as the name may imply. They are very dense objects with an extremely strong gravitational pull. Flamingos are such cool animals. True. They bend their legs at the knee. Myth. They actually bend them at the ankles, since the knees are closer to the body as well as covered in feathers. Supermarket apples are fresh. Eh, maybe yes, but maybe not. They can be up to one year old, since they're often picked between August and November. After that, they're covered in wax and dried in hot air. Finally, they're sent into cold storage, and after 6 to 12 months, we see them on the supermarket shelves. Bottled water has an expiration date? True. But that doesn't mean the water is the thing that expires. The bottle does. The plastic starts to leak into the water, and some unwanted chemicals appear. The tea bag wasn't actually planned. True. In the early 20th century, Thomas Sullivan filled small soaken bags with samples of tea leaves and sent them to his customers. The idea was to open them and toss tea leaves in the hot water. Many customers thought they were supposed to put those bags into the teapot without opening them. The tea bag went through some improvements, got string and a paper tag at the end, and the new unplanned invention was ready. Lightning will never strike the same spot twice. Mm -mm, not true. The Empire State Building was once struck eight times in only 24 minutes. There was a terrible storm, and nothing could or can generally keep lightning away from the place that got hit. If a struck place has features that attracted the lightning in the first place, like terrain shape, standing water, or height, it may attract it once again. You have so much DNA in your body that you can actually stretch it from the sun to Pluto and back. True. And not just once, 17 times. Of course, you're not going to look the same after you do that. Crocodiles are one of the oldest species in the world. Yup. They have been around for 200 million years already. Like my neighbors down the street. Opossums sleep while hanging by their tails. You can see that in cartoons and some photos, but in general, they don't. Their tails are really strong, so these animals can grip branches and hold their weight, but only for short periods. Adults are really too heavy to stay in this position for too long, so they wouldn't get much rest. Goldfish have a 3 second long memory. Nope. Those colorful fish are actually really smart. One study showed goldfish could tell the difference between two classical songs. They're not quick learners, true. But after over 100 sessions, they did it, which wouldn't be possible if their memory could really last only for 3 seconds. One type of salamander, um, you can read that on your own, go ahead, can extend its tongue over half of its body length in only 7 milliseconds. True. That's 50 times faster than a blink of an eye. Ooh, gotta be fast to catch that tongue map. People can multitask. Not true. Checking emails, talking on the phone, cooking, 
It seems like doing several things at the same time saves time, but research shows multitasking is not quite possible. Our brain is wired to do one thing at a time. So when we think we're multitasking, it's actually switching tasks, which can take even longer rather than saving us some time, as well as whittling down our attention spans. Earth is not the only planet with water. NASA discovered Jupiter had an ocean with twice as much water as we have on our planet. It's right under a layer of ice. Even Mars has some liquid water flowing. Also, the Earth is round. Or is it? Technically, it has flattened poles, together with a bulge at the equator. That way, it has an irregular shape of an ellipsoid. Zombies are not made up. True. Okay, humans can't turn into ones as we see in movies, but the animal kingdom has its zombies. For instance, there's a type of fungus that takes over ants, spreading specific chemicals in their brains. That makes an ant leave its family, looking for the place where this fungus wants to live. The world's biggest waterfall is under the ocean. Oh, very true! It's in the Nordic seas. The cold seawater is denser than the warm waterfall. The drop is almost 2 miles long. The smallest wasp in the world is not bigger than an amoeba. True! This wasp has the same body parts as other bugs, like eyes, wings, brain, legs, and more, but it's just 0.008 inches long, which, in most cases, makes it smaller than one-celled organisms we also know as amoebas. Snow can only be white. Not true. And I'm not talking about the snow near fire hydrants. For example, there are some mountains with pink snow, like the Sierra Nevada in California. Its color is caused by a certain type of algae living there. Aurora Borealis has a sister. True. It's called Aurora Australis, and you can see it in the southern hemisphere. The best time to see it is in winter. Over 99% of atoms is empty space. True. If we collected all the people in the world together and removed all the empty space between the atoms out of them, the population of Earth would fit into the size of an average orange. I think we should try that. Then I could finally get a seat on the bus. Dolphins communicate and call each other by names. True. They use specific vocal whistles to identify each other. So long and thanks for all the fish. The toilet flushes in different directions when on different hemispheres. Nope. The direction is the same whether the toilet is in Australia or France. Really? A snail can have a pretty extended nap. True. Some snails can sleep for around three years in a row. Sharks smell just one tiny drop of blood from miles away. Eh, not quite. Sure, their brain region in charge of smelling odors is enlarged, but the ocean is really big. Plus, it takes time for odor molecules to spread in liquid. On a pretty good day with favorable currents, a shark may smell the prey from a distance of a couple of football fields away, but not miles. Finally, penguins propose to their significant other. True. They're monogamous, and after choosing a mate, the male gives the female a pebble to show his affection. Ah.